Nathaniel here, and welcome to another episode of a, a little bit of deep learning in Keras, where we learn just a little bit of uh, deep learning and a whole lot of Keras. Um, so we're going to be talking about the last important thing in Keras. This is the back end. So if you ever wanted to do anything, anything fancy with your tensors, um, if you wanted to get intermediate layer outputs and representations, if you want to switch the back end from Theana to TensorFlow, uh, this is going to be really important for you. So as long as you're ready, let's get started. Okay. So just to begin off, uh, there is a little config file that, that Keras has. It's actually located in your dot Keras, so your home dot Keras. Um, yeah, and if you guys didn't know that you could actually ls inside of um, inside of IPython, there you go. Another thing we learned. Um, and it looks just like this. It looks like image format epsilon float x backend. What do these things mean? Uh, the image data format can either be channels first or channels last. Uh, TensorFlow generally likes it to be channels last. Um, the channels are like RGB or grayscale, uh, for example. Epsilon, this is used uh, as, as an approximation for zero in, in certain numer uh, numerical applications. I never change this. Uh, float X, uh, so this will be your default float uh, implementation. So in this case, it's float 32. So you can make it 64, 16. This, this is especially useful if you want to replicate results. And then finally, the back end TensorFlow. So if you change that, you can just change what's back end you're using. So, huzzah. Um, the back end is represented. Um, you can import it by keras.import backend as k. And it has all sorts of stuff on it, all sorts of goodies. If you are used to TensorFlow and you're used to this back end, the placeholder will make a placeholder, aka an input. Uh, you can make variables, ones, zeros, k dot variable. You can make uniform variables, you can concatenate, you can softmax, you can blah, blah, blah. There's a ton of stuff on the back end. Why do you want to use this? Well, it's useful if you want to um, translate TensorFlow applications to Theana applications, so that's nice. Uh, other than that, it's just clean. Um, you can use TensorFlow, it's just fine. Um, okay, so that's somewhat useful. Uh, let's look at a couple of other useful back end methods. Um, so previously we were talking about looking at the config to determine which backend you're on. Another way to do that is using the backend. And you can figure out all the things just using k.float, uh, epsilon, dot blah. Um, another thing that's very useful in data cleaning and data formatting is you can cast to float. Um, so specifically, I can make a float 64 numpy array and cast it to a float 32 using this k functionality. You can determine whether things are a keras tensor. So a numpy array is not going to be, but you know, a variable and a, a placeholder are going to be. This one's incredibly useful. A clear session, so you can clear a session. Uh, so if you're working in an IPython notebook and you want to delete all the graph stuff, uh, you go ahead, you call clear session, your graph is empty. Um, and then finally, learning phase. Uh, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but this basically tells you whether you are in test or training mode. This can be very useful for things like dropout or batch normalization. Okay. So, this was kind of interesting, but I think the more interesting thing to do would be to show you a cool application of this. And the application I decided to be um, to show off is showing off what an intermediate layer in Keras would be. There's two ways to do it. <clears throat> so first, we'll make a model, and it's just it's a very plain model. It's just yeah, lots of dense, lots of dense layers. Um, next, we'll specify a layer name that we want. And then we'll make another model. This is kind of interesting. So you make another model composed of parts of your previous model. So in this case, we use the input of the previous model. And then we use this output, so dense1's output. So model.getLayer name. So we get dense1. We look at its output. And we've made a new model. It's actually a much smaller model. We can call all the functions of this model just as if it were a full model, because it is. it is a full model, no discrimination. Uh, so we can call predict, and that prediction will be the output of that intermediate layer. So I'll just run this, and ta-da, it's kind of cool, kind of cool. Um, in addition to this, you can use the function, k.function. Um, <clears throat> I mean, generally, I, I've used k.function, though I'm thinking of switching to using just k.model. Um, it's kind of up to you. So k.function is very similar. It will take a model input, it will take some input, and then it will take some uh, output. Um, and you can just go ahead and you can run this and, and know that you get the exact same thing. Um, so it's, it's just the exact same functionality. So uh, remember, we, we had that k.learning phase. So if your output is, is different, uh, if you're in training or in test phase, 
uh, then you need to also specify the k.learning phase. So k.learning phase right here. Um, so if you specify k.learning phase, you can go ahead and do some interesting things. So get output in test mode, you output in train mode. These are the exact same thing um, for our dense model. Okay. There's a couple of extra things that I thought would be useful, so I'm just going to get to them right at the end. Um, one of these things is evaling a, a variable. So k.eval, this will actually take a specific variable and we'll find out what its representation is. Uh, a similar way to do that is, is get value. Um, and then finally, you can count the parameters uh, in any different part of your model. Uh, so that can be somewhat useful. Um, okay, so I hope this has been useful, especially the, the getting intermediate outputs of models. I, I, I guess you kind of had all the tools to do this before, but I just wanted to show off um, how, how to do it, not just show off. Um, and, and then the rest of these functions can be somewhat useful. Okay, so you guys have all the tools that you need to build Keras models. Um, there's some extra stuff that we can do here and there, visualizing the models, um, using the scikit-learn API, uh, pre-processing stuff, and I'll show all that off, but you are, you are comfy now. You are, you are, you are experts in advance, so, so be proud, um, and I'll see you guys next time. As always, a pleasure.